Hello, it's Scott Madley here, and today we are gonna take a quick visit to the world of Helion. So Helion is this sandbox type, well, very detailed focused. So I'm just, you start out in your cryopod, in a module, and it's pretty much a case of surviving. So it, it looks like everything's written in Unity, the developers are zero gravity games, and there's been a lot of comparisons to Star Citizen in the way that, you know, everything is kind of simulated here, so let's grab stuff. We have emergency protocols, so check pressure suit, check maneuvering pack, oxygen, check power grid, inspect life support systems. Great, so we're going to do that. So that is the status of my current module at this time. We have life support here, but let's bring the power online first. I'm obviously skipping ahead because I've done this before. Uh, the reason I haven't covered this before is because the game is launched in a very, very early state and it seems to be buggy in quite a few places, but, you know, whatever. I want to show you this game because I, I think it deserves a chance. Uh, it The servers aren't particularly full right now, but we'll uh, hopefully get to see some more people playing it. So okay, let's get the suit together, put on my space suit, because uh, without the space suit you can't carry more than one thing at a time. For because apparently uh, we needed spacesuit technology to be able to carry different things in each hand. So put my helmet on, and as soon as I put my helmet on, of course, I start breathing in oxygen. So you can open up your visor to make sure that you're not actually wasting your very valuable oxygen supply. I'm gonna come out with a particular pet peeve of video games that give you ridiculously small oxygen supplies. This is one of these games. I think you can last less than 10 minutes in space, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so we got our suit on. We're gonna look for life support next. So this is... There's been a disaster and bad things have happened. Okay, so we get air generator is offline. We've got a couple of parts in here that are sort of working. That's pretty good. Over here, though, we're missing carbon filters and the other parts could need fix. So let's, uh, let's go and find our filter station. So filters are going in here, air filter, and your filters are supposed to go in there. Now, they're usually stored in this little box here. Usually. Oh, thank goodness. I have spawned in modules without these in the past, so it can be rather frustrating to have that. You're like, damn it, I don't have the oxygen I need. Okay, so just drop that in there. That's one of them. Let's get this other one. I should have actually taken advantage of my special suit skills and carried more than one item at a time, but apparently I am too confused by modern technology to manage this. Okay, close this up. Now you can actually take out the different parts and investigate them. See this one is the servo motor. Uh, it's in pretty good shape so there's no reason to replace it but if you go around and things get damaged you might need to replace it. So yeah let's turn the life support on now. Life support, uh, air generator, air filter. Great! And so we should be now generating air all around this ship. Great! Now what? Well Next thing we should probably do is try to build some more stuff. Let's actually go outside. We do have like distress calls which we can call other players with and stuff. You have artificial gravity. You can turn that off and float around in ecstasy because I'm traveling at the speed of light. Um, I think Freddie Mercury did that better. C come on. There we go. Turn that back. Oh wow, apparently I can't even fall correctly. I'm so unused to gravity having been in cryo sleep forever. Let's go outside. So this door opens automatically because there is atmosphere here but outside this there is nothing but empty deep space. So I have to be very carefully op careful opening this. If I just open this right now I will get blown out into space but I don't have an airlock and I don't have any way to pump the air out of this. So I pretty much have to open the door control panel and now hold shift which is like hold on tight. So here we go. Whoa, I could feel myself getting pulled out but I successfully made it out and we only lost a small amount of air. So now we're floating in deep space. Oh, uh, yeah, let's put my visor down before I die. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so there's my module from the outside. Oxygen supply running down very, very quickly. And I can't see anything nearby, but let's see what I can see. I see an AMHAC. So I think 
That is an airlock module, which is just floating around. It must have got knocked off of this. It must have got knocked off of my uh, emergency escape module. So I'll fly towards it. And what you can do is you find these modules in deep space and you can dock them onto your base to make your base better. This is a multiplayer game, incidentally. I'm sure some player will come along and ruin my day at some point. So here we go. Let's slow down. And you can see that I'm already burning through the oxygen incredibly quickly. Apparently we live in a universe where lithium hydroxide has not been invented. And we just have to vent the partially breathed oxygen to get rid of the carbon dioxide instead of recycling it. Okay, docking panel. So we're going to open that up. So, helpfully, this stuff has a reaction control thrusters on board so we can actually fly it to the target. So I need to target the outpost. There we go. So that's me just getting the rotation of this correct. Oh, rotation coming back. I think I may be having some server lag. Or server overloadedness, or just my network being terrible. The player motion is apparently client-side, but the spacecraft motion is server-side. That's what I've heard. Uh, and right now I have like a 26 millisecond lag, but I think what's also happening is we're downloading movies and stuff across the internet, so it's entirely possible that this is not representative of the smoothness of the final game. So don't take this uh, as an example of terribleness or otherwise and stop the rotation. So you do have a sh the shift key will stop your lateral motion, but the current the key that uh, stops your sorry, the shift key will stop your rotational motion, but the key that is supposed to stop your velocity match velocity relative to the target, it got broken. It was too buggy and they had to disable it. It apparently caused all sorts of terrible server desync issues. So Right now, if you fly close to a target and you don't dock, you pretty much have to manually set the speed to zero. Which is far from ideal, but I can handle it. Okay, we're coming in. We're going to try and dock this airlock onto my castle in the sky. Here we go. Let's set the rotation a little better. Yeah, I'm just tapping the rotate key and a lot of the time it's not responding. I'm sure that that rotation issue is because of network lag on my end. Okay, we've we've docked. We're low on fuel apparently, but we are done. So I can hit tab, float away, I can close this panel. And now if I turn around behind me, we have the rest of the spaceship. So I can actually go in my newfound airlock, which is nice. So basically, that's one of the big parts of the game, is finding new modules for your space station. But they're all kind of just floating around in deep space because there's been a major accident of sorts. Okay, get some lag here. There we go, grab that. Okay, so we're gonna depressurize the airlock in the interior, and you pretty much just have to wait for this to happen. I can let go of this for now. And watch my oxygen deplete very, very slowly. Or very, very quickly, actually. Yeah, the space games, they like to give you five-minute oxygen supplies for, you know, reasons of gameplay, or rather annoyingness. I, I'm not a fan of it, you know. space Real spacesuits will easily keep people alive for 12-plus hours on single EVAs. Okay, so we've got this. Now I can open the outer door. We get a little bit of air floating throughout, but we're mostly done. And I'm having my suit RCS went offline for some reason. Floating through the airlock like Major Tom. Open up my visor. Now we're here, I can open the in inner door. Yes, and I've got my space station. You know, the next thing we should look at. Okay, so we've got. S I guess we have a suit locker in this airlock. Oh, look, yes, yeah, spare space suits. That's nice. So I can just. I can ditch my old jetpack, or I can go in here and recharge them. So this is me coming into the space station. There, it's detected that I'm here, you see? It's coming in the other exit. So here, this is where I recharge stuff. So I'm going to take my spacesuit apart. First thing I'm going to do is drop it on here to recharge the thing. So it'll sit there and recharge. Meanwhile, I could then drop it on this and transfer stuff to it, but that takes... The, the recharge here takes a few seconds, apparently. 
What's on this panel here? EVA protocols, put on stuff, test RCS, always leave using the airlock. And then there's this diagram up in the top right corner that looks bad. Message fragmentation can occur. Okay, great. Okay, now in the deep future, we also have spaceships. So let's go and find ourselves a spaceship. I think I saw one floating nearby. Let's do the airlock properly this time, like a pro. Okay. F to interact. So close the inner door. I think that's it closing. I can't really tell. Depressurize. Now we gotta wait. Uh, oh yeah. And of course, as the air pressure drops, I can close my visor up. Excellent. Then everything will turn red to warn me that I will suffocate if I am outside. Sound got very quiet. See, I believe it's European developers, Zero Gravity Games, and it's available on in Steam, Early Access. Okay, outer door. There we go. And early on it got a lot of interest, but you know, it's been a few months and they've outputted uh, they've output a lot of different changes. So they're definitely actively developing the game. It just seems to be kind of empty, and I think that's really down to the fact that they had to push the game out a little earlier than they would have liked. Okay, let's find the mule. There it is there. So that's a spacecraft I saw earlier. Let's float out towards it. Now the spacecraft might make a better mobile base because it tends to have more stuff on it. It tends to have everything that the modules do, but what the modules have is cryo canisters. So with cryo canisters, cryo like stasis pods or whatever, that's how you bring your friends in and set up a base. So the idea of course is you and your friends can make an awesome base in space. And then your friend, other people that you don't like in pirate ships can come along and break up your base in space. It's a multiplayer game. Uh, I'm not sure what the status of piracy is, but I'm sure somebody has thought of it. Okay. There we go. F to interact. So, uh, depressurize. If only somebody had left this airlock depressurized, I wouldn't have to wait for this to happen. See, I already wasted 20% of my oxygen just crossing that distance. It, I, I'm sorry, I get really mad at games that give you really short oxygen supplies, unless there's like a valid gameplay reason. This game you spend so much time outside, right, so much time needing a spacesuit, it's just annoying to have to repressure and refill your suit. Maybe there's a better suit later in the game. Maybe I'm being unnecessarily harsh about this, but uh, it is something that happens a lot in fiction where they, they make spacesuits that just don't last as long as they should. Okay. I remember Adrift, at least it, even though I wasn't a huge fan of the game, the, Adrift looked great and it played okay, but the spacesuit in that, at least, it was supposed to be leaking oxygen because it had been damaged. Okay, there we go. Now repressurize. So we're floating around. Air coming into the airlock. Yes. Not Unlike certain games that seem to have air running into the airlock regardless of whether they're pressurizing or depressurizing. And once this reaches suitably high pressure, I can just open this door. You know what? There, it's green now. Open my headset. Let's do this. It's not going to open until uh, the, the, air, the air pressure is equalized. You see, I'm pushing the button. Ah, there we go. So, you'll notice I'm in 0G right now. That looks like the floor down there. If you go in feet first, you need to go in feet first to uh, not fall over. You could try grab the ladder if you like. I've never had a good success with that. Oh, uh, apparently I still managed to fall and land on my butt. That gravity, gravity is a bitch. So here we have the engine or the power supply here. So the fusion reactor is online, solar panels are offline. Not that I would think that would matter when you have a fusion reactor around, but 
hey, you know, the game likes to supply these little diagrams with power running from one place to the other. Look, getting power into my capacitor now. The capacitor will be needed to power up things like the warp drive and everything. Air filter looks like to be in good status. Let's check the life support here. Yeah, everything seems to be working here. Oh, and did I check? It is online, or it's on standby right now. We have a lower deck down here. Let's just head down. Now, there's an airlock and everything here if you want to use it that way. You can depressurize the entire lower half of the ship if you like. Although, it's not... it doesn't really work that well. Now, down here, we have mining drills. So... Okay, so let's, uh, now that we've investigated that, let's actually try and travel a bit further afield than using the crappy RCS. So jump into the seat here. There we go. I said jump into the seat. Thank you. So FTL is online, and to access FTL, we have to go to the navigation display here. So bring that up, and we get this star system here with planets and stuff in it. This is Anthar... Erdil, Bather, Ea, Nymath, and uh, apparently the star... Oh, it's the Helion system, of course. I was about to say the sun didn't have a name, but Helion makes complete sense uh, because that's what the name of the game is. Okay, so I can actually uh, go to the home station. No, I can go to my home station. Thank you. So that's it there. That's where I am. That's where everything else is. And it looks like there's a bunch of other stuff in orbit. There's some asteroids around here. Yeah, I guess there's asteroids. I'm not sure I see anything else, but I can scan because we have a scanner. And that might find some other stuff, but apparently it doesn't. So let's let's go to one of these asteroids to mine it. I don't know which one. We'll just... Ooh. That looked kind of insane. Wow. Is that somebody scanning me back? <laughs> I have not seen that effect happen before in the game. Let's pick this. So I'm going to right click on it and warp drive. That's basically setting course for it. Bring one of my warp cells online. It tells me acceleration is too high. So what you do is you adjust the amount of time it takes and it'll tell me FTL drive is ready. If I make the arrival time shorter, then yeah, let's do that. Initialize. So now I need to align the spacecraft, and that can, of course, be a chore given the given that the um, rotation rates and everything seem to be a little wonky in places. But it looks like we're going in roughly the right direction. Oh, and I'm not sure what's happening there. It seems to be confused. Must be getting close here, Jess. Aligning to the destination. There we go. Okay, we're ready to commit. Five seconds, we get J to activate. And we head into warp drive. And while we're in warp drive, of course, there's a mission there's a minute for this, but I can you know, I can pretty much jump out of my seat now, right? No need for me to hang around in the seat while we're in warp drive. We can just admire the sights. Like I can go down to the warp core and watch it doing its job. I mean, probably there's some sign that says stay away from scary radiation. I probably shouldn't touch it while it's working. Might, you know, short circuit it or something. Bingo! Now there's an asteroid nearby. Oh, there's another mule nearby. That's interesting. I wonder if there's another player nearby. As far as I know, there aren't any weapons on the ships just yet, but you can shoot each other for sure. Okay, so now we're going. There's the asteroid. Where's that other ship? That's the other ship there, just floating around. Maybe somebody logged out in space? I don't know, we'll find out. So yeah, uh, mining. Mining, let's see how that works. Obviously, we select the mining thing. And then I'm going to slow down. Just find a nice spot to mine. I don't have a, an asteroid scanner yet. There we go. So I can start mining here. And I'm getting heavy ice. I'm not sure what that's used for, but you know, we'll find out later. As you can imagine, this involves me just kind of sitting around and mining. It's 
a great deal of fun to be had, I'm sure. They don't even let you see a nice picture of the environment because you're just getting a whole bunch of ice in your face. It's what you have to do to survive in the distant future that is Helion. Of course, it's not that realistic because I'm able to mine all this ice really, really quickly. Let's go and check this spaceship out. Maybe they have oxygen or something on board. Okay, let's open the outer door. Anybody in here? Uh, somebody has left a, a jetpack here. I think this is a player's space. So, I mean, I could be a real scumbag and steal all their nice stuff, right? Close the outer door and repressurize. Okay, let's open the door. Hmm, that door's not opening. Oh, maybe the door's locked. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Can I see? There is a lock button down there. Uh oh, wait a second. Is that? Did I see somebody there? There's another player there! Ha! Hi! They're waiting for me. Oh, that's a solar panel on the outside. You know, I could steal his servo motors. Watch this. Yeah, there you see, steal stuff off the outside of your spaceship. If you're not going to let me in... Oh, don't worry, I'll put it back. Honestly, if they pay me enough for something. If they let me in, I'll put it back. No, so, yeah, that is Hellion, and it is isn't very, very early access, so... Yeah, if that sounds like your kind of thing, you should definitely check it out. Uh, otherwise, of course, there are many, many other things that you should check out. But until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.